Welcome to this movie on statistical mechanics. It's part of a series of movies I have made for my course in advanced statistical mechanics at the Technical University of Delft. The subject of this movie is the time evolution of the state of a system in uh, statistical mechanics. And in statistical mechanics we do not exactly know in which uh, wave function a quantum system would be, in which state quantum state the system would be. Rather we describe the system by a, an object called a density matrix or density operator. And so in this movie I will introduce the density operator and then derive its time evolution and that is known as the quantum Liouville equation. I hope the movie is helpful. In a previous movie I have considered the uh, Liouville equation, the classical Liouville equation, which is the time evolution of the density in phase space. So in phase space we have a density function uh, rho, uh, which depends on all the momenta and all the uh, positions. So all the gen this could be generalized coordinates, but you can also read them as just the momenta and the positions of a set of point particles in the case of a monatomic gas and then the, the state of the system is specified by specifying all the momenta and all the positions and the rho is the probability density for finding the system in a particular state. So if we have a small volume element in phase space then rho times that volume element gives you the probability of finding the system in within that volume element. And the time evolution was given by this equation, that's the classical, the classic Liouville equation, and it tells you that the partial derivative of rho with respect to t is given by this uh, complicated expression, and usually we abbreviate this as the uh, bracket rho comma h, and that's called the Poisson bracket. And the Poisson bracket has certain properties, for example, it's anti-symmetric. If I swap rho and h, you can easily see that from this expression, then it uh, swaps sign. So now the question is, what about quantum mechanics? So the class in classical mechanics, rho is the probability to find the system in a particular state. And so the state in quantum mechanics is no longer given by all the momenta and the positions as Heisenberg uh, prevents us from defining positions and momenta at the same time. Instead, we can specify the state of the system by giving its wave function psi j. So psi j is a wave function which is accessible to this many body system. So it's a very complicated object, psi j, because it's a wave function which describes the behavior of all the particles in my system. Now, um, there is an uncertainty, so we don't know exactly in which uh, state the system is, but there are several candidate states, and they are denoted as Psi J. And each of those candidate states occurs with a particular probability, and we call that probability Pj. And now I've used the index J here, which uh, suggests that it's a discrete index. So it could be a discrete index. Uh, often we also need continuous indices. Um, and J will not only denote, say, the uh, orbital degrees of freedom, it could also include the spin of the particle. So J is just a shorthand notation for all the quantum labels of this big, complicated wave function. Nevertheless, we always need to have that the sum or the integral of uh, p over j is 1, and that's necessary, of course, because p is a probability and it should be normalized. Now, if we have an arbitrary operator which represents a physical quantity, what we would like to do is calculate the expectation value of that guy. And um, if we are in a state psi j, then this expectation value is the bracket of psi j a psi j. So it's just the expectation value evaluated according to quantum mechanics. But we don't know whether the system is in a particular uh, state j. It could be in any out of a set of states psi j. And they all occur with a probability p j. So the expectation value of a will be the weighted average 
of the expectation value of A in each state Psi J. And so this is the way we can calculate the expectation value of F any operator certain that you should think of uh, the energy of the momentum etc for the operator A. But I keep it general here, it's just the quantum operator A. And I denote the fact that it's an operator, I emphasize that by the hat. Now we are going to encode this information that we have a set of states, psi j's, each occurring with a probability pj into an object which itself has the form of an operator and that's called the density matrix or density operator. So both uh, uh, names are used interchangeably and it's denoted as rho. So it is the analog of the rho which uh, gives you the probability density in phase space for classical systems. But now we are in a quantum system, so rho now gets ahead. It has the form of an operator. And rho is defined as the sum or the integral or a comb combination of sums and integrals uh, over all the states, so over all the j, pj, psi j, psi j. So let's first realize that this is indeed an operator. You can imagine that if I act with this on some arbitrary state phi in the Hilbert space, then this is a number. It's just a complex number. And you see here a vector. This is also a number, so what comes out is a linear combination of vectors, and that's a vector. So if rho acts on this vector, there is a vector coming out, and that shows you that rho indeed has the form of an operator. Now for any operator A, so any physical quantity like energy or momentum or angular momentum, we can calculate that with uh, by the expectation value of this operator A. And we had seen before that this was the way to calculate that expectation value. And now I claim that we get the same answer if we calculate a trace of this new object, the rho, multiplied by the operator A. So operator times operator is an operator and we take the trace. What is the trace? Well, the trace is the sum of the diagonal elements of the operator. So here we have an operator. We take the diagonal elements. So we take a chi n here and here we take exactly the same chi n. So in a matrix this would be a diagonal matrix element. And we sum over all those diagonal elements and that is the trace. And in this uh, definition we assume that the chi n we take that to be an orthonormal basis. And so what I should do now is demonstrate that indeed this expression gives you the correct evaluation of the expectation value of operator A, which we know has this form. So let's show that now. Now the proof proceeds in two stages. Uh, the first stage, I should put it to here, the first stage um, is to show that for an, uh, an orthonormal basis in the Hilbert space, uh, chi n, this object, the sum over n, chi n, chi n, is the unit matrix. And uh, in order to show that, we take an arbitrary vector in the Hilbert space, and that arbitrary vector can be written as a linear combination of the basis functions, so of the basis vectors, chi m. So cm, chi m. And we take now this operator and we act on this vector. And for this vector, I have replaced that here by this expansion over the chi -ms. Now we use the fact that the chi -ms form an orthonormal basis, and that means that the inner product between chi n and chi m gives me a Kronecker delta, so the n should be equal to the m, and uh, in that case, I get a 1. So there is only one element, one combination here which gives a non-zero result, and that is 1. So m is in that case equal to n because of the delta function, and I get this result. And that was precisely psi. So what I have shown is that if I take uh, my uh, 
operator, this operator, and I act with it on Psi, then I get Psi back and therefore this should be a unit operator. And that is a very useful result in order to show that indeed the trace of row A gives me the correct expectation value. So let's go ahead and just write out the definition. Here we have the operator rho, now expanded in its form pj psi j psi j. We multiply it by a, so this is rho times a, and taking the trace means that we take all the diagonal elements and we sum over those. So the pj is a number, so we take the sum and the pj because of the linearity of the inner product. We can take that in front of the uh, expression. Then here is still the sum over n, and now I note uh, something very important. Here we have an operator and it is sandwiched between two vectors, a bra vector and a cat vector. And that means that this is a number. This object here is a number. It's just a complex number. The same can be said of this. That's also just a complex number. And two complex numbers can just be interchanged and that's what I've done on the next line. So apart from uh, pulling the sum over j p j out in front of the uh, expression because of the linearity of the inner product, I've just swapped the two remaining expressions, the two remaining numbers. And now we see that here there is a sum over n chi n chi n and there is no other n in this expression. And we use now that we just have shown that this is the unit operator. And so everything which has a red brace underneath can be replaced by a unit operator and can therefore be left out of this expression. And if I do that, I find directly this expression. So I leave out uh, this sum and these two chi's. And in that case, I'm left with this expression. Now, that was precisely the expression that we had seen. This is the expectation value of the operator A. And so we see that rho contains all the information that we need to uh, calculate the expectation value of quantum operators. And so that's enough. So rho is sufficient for calculating the outcomes of the experiments and so once we know rho we have all the necessary information of the, uh, about the system. In the classical case we have seen that the uh, Liouville equation for the phase space density is a very important equation which is very useful for setting up statistical mechanics. Now what about the uh, dynamics of rho, the density matrix in quantum uh, Hilbert space. Well, that turns out not to be not to be too difficult. So if we look at the uh, time derivative of rho d rho dt, uh, pj's the pj's are constant, and uh, they are independent of time. And so we get two contributions to the time derivative: one from this psi j and one from that psi j. Here I've written out the first time derivative, and there the second one. We just use the product rule here. Now in order to find these derivatives we use the time-dependent Schrödinger equation which says that i h d d t psi j is h times psi j. And uh, for this uh, second term we need the emission conjugate of the time-dependent Schrödinger equation. Uh, taking the emission conjugate turns the i into a minus i all the uh, cat vectors become bra vectors and h remains the same. Of course it occurs in another place but uh, h is emission so it doesn't change. Then if we put those two rules, those two prescriptions into this equation we directly get the following result. We get d rho dt is i over h, h rho minus rho h which is recognized as a commutator and we can write it in this form. And now there is a striking, uh, striking similarity with the equation that we have previously derived in the classical case. So in the case of the classical 
phase space density, we had Liouville's equation, which led to the Poisson bracket, and uh, that is a anti-symmetric expression in the sense that if I swap rho and a, I get a minus sign. And we see that in quantum mechanics this Poisson bracket is replaced by a commutator which is also anti-symmetric. And so you see that the expressions for rho and for rho classical are very, very similar, which is a beautiful result. And the uh, quantum evolution equation for rho is called the quantum Liouville equation. Now let us go to the uh, problem of a stationary state. Then we have an equilibrium, so d rho dt is then taken zero. And just as in the classical case, we can argue that once rho is a function of the operator a, it will always commute with rho with h. And uh, it's easy to show that by expanding this row in uh, a Taylor expansion. And so uh, then you will find indeed that the right hand side here always is, is vanishes. So row is stationary. Now, if you would like to write out this result um, in a, a way which um, gives us um, really the energy of the system. And then it turns out to be useful to uh, diagonalize h. So we get h times phi n is e n phi n. So phi n are the eigenstates, e n the eigenvalue factors, eigenvalues, sorry. And in that case, any operator, so in particular this rho of h, can be written as an expansion phi n rho of e n phi n. And so the rho of En has then the same form as a classical equation. An important property of rho is the fact that it's uh, properly normalized. And so if we take the trace of rho times the unit matrix, that should be 1. Well, we can leave out the unit matrix, so the trace of rho should be 1. And in order to show that, we have to specify the norm of the Psi j. And um, I haven't said that uh, from the start, but we always take the Psi j to be normalized to 1. The Psi j not necessarily form a orthonormal set, but each vector should have unit length. Now we want to show that this indeed holds, that the trace of rho is equal to 1. So we take the Psi j to be normalized and then we want to show that this is true. Well, uh, we take the trace, so we have chi n, chi n, and we sum over n, and in between we put rho. So this expression here is my rho. And now I can uh, play the same trick as before. I first take the sum and the, pi, uh, the pj in front of the expression using the linearity of the inner product. And then I have a number here, because this is an inner product, I have a number there, it's also an inner product, and then I swap those two numbers and I see again that the combination sum over n, chi n, chi n is recognized as the unit operator. I can leave it out and therefore we arrive at the sum of pj and then the inner product of psi j psi j but that was 1 and the sum over the pj is equal to 1 so we are done we have shown now that the trace of rho is always 1 Another property is that rho is Hermitian. Which we can show as, show as follows. So we had rho is defined as the sum over j, p, j, psi, j, psi, j. And therefore the rho dagger is the omission conjugate and the p's are real so they will remain as they are and if I take the omission conjugate here 
it's exactly the same. And so I see that rho dagger is rho, which is the property of hermeticity. So rho is her mission. Finally, uh, let's distinguish between uh, a system where we are where we really know the state. So suppose we know the state of the system and we call that psi. So that's the state, the quantum state in which the system is. And in that case we have only one candidate state and so we have only one p. The p should be normalized so it should be one. So in that case we can say that we can write that rho is just psi psi. This is called, and that's very important to realize, it's called a pure state case. Not pure, so if the system is not in a pure state, then we call it a mixed state. And for the pure state case, we have that rho squared is rho and that's easily uh, easy to verify using this and the normalization of psi and uh, this is a property which tells us that rho is a projection operator let's end by uh, Calculating the density operator for a very simple case, we take the simplest non-trivial Hilbert uh, space, which is a two-dimensional space, and there is a basis consisting of two basis functions, 0 and 1. This is uh, typically a, uh, an example which is re reminiscent of what people call qubits. And so suppose I throw a die, and if it's head, I give you this state if it's tails I give you that state. So how can we characterize the state that you get? Well we have uh, if the die is a fair die then we have uh, one half one half for both cases and we see that the uh, row is given as the probabilities times zero zero plus the probability one half times one one and if I work that out now in the matrix uh, or in the vector notation I will get the following one zero and then 1 is 0. That's the first term and the second term will be 0 1 0 1. Now if I multiply these vectors I get 2 by 2 matrices. matrices. The first one is the matrix 1 0 0 0 and the second one is the matrix 0 0 0 1 which leads to one half one one zero zero. So we see that this matrix has trace one. It's one half plus one half is the sum of the eigenvalues as it should, because it should be a properly normalized uh, row. Trace of a trace of row should be one. And um, it's not a pure state because we have either this state or we have that state, and it couldn't be more uncertain because we have uh, than this because we have probability one half for this, we have probability one half for this. So this is a state which is as mixed as possible. A pure state would have one eigenvalue one and the other one uh, zero. So if the matrix would be in diagonal form, it would be either 1, 0 or 0, 1. In this case, it's 1 half, 1 half. So that is as far as you can possibly be from a pure state.